Hey, what are we gonna do today? We are going to explore Einstein Brain. I think we need a better outfit for that. Yeah, that's sure. Let's transform. Ta-da! So me, Professor Shazwan, and my assistant, Professor Anissa, we're gonna tell you about Einstein's thought experiment. But wait, who is Einstein? What the heck is he doing? So guys, let's get to know who is Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, in the southern Germany city of Ulm. Albert Einstein grew up in a middle-class Jewish family in Munich. As a child, Einstein became fascinated by mathematics, science, and music as he played the violin. He dropped out of school in 1894 and moved to Switzerland, where he resumed his schooling and later gained admission to the Swiss Federal Polytechnic Institute in Zurich. In 1896, he re-announced his German citizenship and remained officially stateless before becoming a Swiss citizen in 1901. The German-born physicist Albert Einstein developed four of his groundbreaking theories while working as a clerk in the Swiss Patent Office in Bern. In the first paper, he applied the quantum theory developed by German physicist Max Planck to light in order to explain the phenomenon known as the photoelectric effect by which a material will emit electrically charged particles when heated by light. The second article contained Einstein's experiment proof of the existence of atoms which he got by analyzing the phenomenon of Brownian motion in which tiny particles were suspended in water. In the third and most famous article titled On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies Einstein confronted the apparent contradiction between two principal theories of physics, Isaac Newton's concept of absolute space and time, and James Clerk Maxwell's idea that the speed of light was constant. To do this, Einstein introduced his special theory of relativity, which held that the laws of physics are the same even for objects moving in different initial frames, which is at a constant speed relative to each other, and that the speed of light is a constant in all initial frames. Here. It comes with mind-blowing thinking, and this we call Einstein thought experiment. A fourth paper concerned the fundamental relationship between mass and energy, concept viewed previously as completely separate. Einstein's famous equation E equal to mc squared, where C was the constant speed of light, expressed this relationship. From this equation, the era of atomic bomb began. After making his name with four scientific articles published in 1905, he went on to win worldwide fame for his general theory of relativity and a Nobel Prize in 1921 for his explanation on the phenomenon known as the photoelectric effect. Einstein immigrated from Germany to the United States when the Nazis took power before the World War II. He lived and worked in Princeton, New Jersey for the remainder of his life. So now you know who is Einstein. Einstein thought experiment mostly related to the theory of special relativity, including the using of concept frame of reference. Oh man, what the hell is that frame of reference? The frame of reference is divided into two parts, which is the initial frame of reference and non-initial frames of reference. Initial frame of reference is when the observer is experiencing constant motion which is he is traveling in a constant speed either in a helicopter on a cruise or inside a bullet train this is what we call initial, initial frame, frame of, of reference non-initial frame of reference is when the observer is experiencing acceleration where it is not in constant motion there is so many Einstein thought experiments but we were interested in two of them which is the first one chasing the beam of light and the second one the twin paradox chasing the beam of light hey there can you see my face in the mirror no i can't see your face oh uh, stop kidding me you can see my face whoa 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 wait actually this girl is right also goes to this guy none of them are wrong it depends on what kind of reference they are in if you guys still wondering about this, let's hear Einstein's explanation about his thought. 
Actually, my theory is simple. It's about me traveling at a constant speed, holding a mirror. See, it's actually simple. So here, I can see the reflection of my oh, face gosh. because of the light bounce off on my eyes. But the thing is, if I'm traveling in the speed of light, will I able to see the reflection of my face? Hmm, interesting, eh? So now, in order for me to see the reflection of my face, I need to catch up the speed of light. As we know, the light is already travel in the speed of light. But if I'm traveling in the speed of light too, am I be able to catch up the speed of light? Am I able to see the reflection of my face? That's the problem. But actually, I do able to see the reflection of my face. So, I will find that I'm traveling in the speed of light. And the light traveling in the speed of light relative to me. For sure, I can see the reflection of my face. Because I'm in an initial frame of reference It's like normal situation It's like I'm looking at a mirror in a house In a room In a toilet It's the same So In this situation The Einstein friend which is outside the tree Will not be able to see the reflection of Einstein face As he was in different frame of reference In his own frame of reference He will observe that The train is moving at the speed of light but the light is traveling twice the speed of light so this is what's going on in Einstein thought experiment if Einstein want to measure the same speed of light as his friend outside the train so the train must be contracted in the direction of the moving Another thing that must be considered is the Einstein time will take by slower than his friend outside the train. Hey man, chill up. It's still 10 p.m. What? It's already 2 a.m. We still can chill inside. And this is called the principle of time dilation, which cover up in the theory of special relativity. Another thought experiment covered under time dilation proposed by Einstein is the twin paradox. It is a theory about a pair of twins, where one twin is traveling in a high-speed rocket to space while the other twin stays at home on Earth. So, why does this happen? Well, this is due to the ratio of time measured by the twin on the rocket to the time measured by the twin on Earth. This can be proven through Einstein's time dilation equation. This equation defines the phenomenon of time dilation. So, for this equation, if v were to be greater than c, the term under the square root sign would be negative. Because we know that it's mathematically impossible to have a square root of a negative number, it's impossible for v to be greater than the speed of light, which is c. This means that the right side of the equation must always be greater than 1. So, the ratio must always be greater than 1, so the twin on the rocket would measure a longer time compared to the twin on Earth. Another way to explain this would be that if the twin on the rocket were to look at a clock, the clock would appear to tick a lot slower than it would appear to tick on Earth. Basically, the theory of special relativity allows us to predict that moving clocks run a lot more slowly from the point of view of an observer at rest, meaning the twin on Earth. If the twin on the rocket were to travel at the speed of light, the time will stop for his dimension, and that means that the twin on rocket's age will not be affected at all. So, how about we take a look at an example with two twins, Anissa and Asina. Remember to observe the ticker in the top left. As you can see, the twin on the right is going through life at a normal pace. They're graduating, getting married, getting a baby, aging, getting old. But the twin on the left isn't experiencing much time change at all. For them, time appears to have slowed down. In fact, time for them appears to have stopped completely. Hey guys, hey, I want to ask something. Uh, have you guys think that time can be stopped? No. 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 No way. Why you guys say no? Because 
because because it's tight and can't be stopped. The light. It's maybe like the earth keeps spinning continuously, so there's no such thing as time stopping. Because yeah. physics. Because it's physics. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, sir, what do you think about going back in time? Is it possible? Not yet. I don't. I don't know how that would happen. Uh, cool idea. I'd love to do it. How, how, but it couldn't work, could it? I don't know. Einstein's idea about the time dilation in his theory of special relativity is that um, in the first situation, when we are traveling at a regular speed, so we will observe that our time will take by at a normal rate. Hmm, in the second situation is that when we are traveling near to the speed of light So, we will observe that our time will take by slower But different in the third situation Is that when we are traveling at exactly the speed of light So we will find that our time will eventually In the fourth situation, when we go beyond the speed of light, we will back go in Einstein had changed 360 to the nature of human thinking. Mind blown! So now, you have mastered in the concept of Einstein thought experiment. So, start from now. You can spread this knowledge to the whole world. Your beloved mom, your dad, your brother, your little sister. Your auntie, your uncle, your friends, and especially, don't forget, your English teacher. Bye bye! Sayonara! Woo! <laughs> 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 Wait, my door's open. I got to go.